What's going on everybody? Got a tutorial for you here today. Uh, as you can see I have an LED kit strewn about. Yes, it is okay that I treat it like this. It is completely invincible. Also made by Superman. Or whoever else is invincible. But, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to install one of these LED kits. Um, for most of you, especially those, uh, those of you that have bought LED kits for your Xbox 360, this probably looks kind of jumbled and like a mess compared to what you see, but I will tell you why this sort of LED kit is a lot better. Um, I also have a tutorial on how to make an LED kit like this, but for some people it's not that easy. It takes soldering skills, you have to calculate uh, resistance and ohms and everything that you need for the power source, so that's why I'm doing this as well. Now, to start off with, if you uh, don't have the LED kit or you can't make one yourself, um, I will put a link in the description. It's going to link you to Tinker Mods and the Tinker Mods website. Um, Tinker Mods um, has really cool LED kits and they're they're really exactly what I expect and um, this is why I'm pitching them. Uh, or I guess you could say pitching them, whatever you want to say. Um, the difference between these LED kits and LED kits you buy on eBay and Amazon all day long, they've been selling for quite some time. Um, for those of you that have bought them, most of them will come in like these LED strips and you know, you'll have it where it connects to the DVD drive cable and then you'll have these two little strips that each have four LEDs on them and see that is a big issue for me because if you want it to look good, you're not going to get it to look good if you've got all the LEDs in this one long strip or if you've got, you know, two little small strips because you're only going to be able to have the lighting coming out of certain areas. So if you're limited to, let's say you've got your console here, and this is just a shell piece, but say you, you've got your first clump of LEDs here and the second clump here, all your light is going to be coming in this way. And so over here it's going to be kind of dark, and over here it's going to be a little bit darker, and everything's just going to glare in from this side, or, you know, wherever you put it. And uh, same thing with the strips that are just one long strip. I mean, you're even more limited there. And the thing about these is, now this one only has four LEDs on it. This is kind of like a test kit I've been playing with. It actually has multicolor LEDs in it. It was just something I was kind of playing with, um, kind of testing. But this is set up exactly like the Tinker Moss ones. So this will go really well with what they sell. Um, so, first thing I'm going to show you is each one is individually wired. That's a great benefit because that gives you the ability to mount them wherever you want them and evenly distribute the light. So even if you've got only four LEDs on a strip, which I think the ones in Tinker Mods come with six, I believe. Um, even if you've got four, four or six, which is less than t what the other ones have, you're going to get a lot better lighting effects because everything is going to be balanced. You can have everything coming in from even corners and from, you know, weak places where you need a little extra light. Um, so you really have a lot of flexibility compared to anything else out there for sale. Um, and the other great thing is uh, they're versatile. They will have these little... Uh, double-sided sticky foam tape things on there. Um, but the thing is, is you don't have to use that. You can also use hot glue. And when anybody gets a case from case from me or anything, that's what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hot glue it. Uh, it's just kind of a luxury to have that little, little piece of double-sided foam st sticky tape. It just makes your job a little bit easier. Um, and you don't have to have a hot glue gun, or if you do have one, you don't have to pull it out and wait it to heat up. You can just pop it right in there. Um, so yeah, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you a good way. Now, like I said, this one has four, and I just kind of did that because it's going to be obvious where I put them. But for the Tinker Mods ones, uh, which have six, uh, I'll show you real quick uh, kind of some ideas to put those extra two lights, um, just so you won't kind of wonder about what the best placement is. Although I think it's kind of, would be kind of obvious, but just for those of you that think, you know, may be thinking with a different mindset and stuff. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take this case. Now there isn't any plexiglass in this one. I've done several videos with this. I've done all kinds of videos with this. 
I just realized my camera rotates as I move this. That's kind of weird. It follows this. Huh. That's a little freaky, actually. Um, so you, you'll have to remember when you're mounting these, uh, you'll have to work around the, uh, the plexiglass. And my best tip to you is um, when there's plexiglass, put it over top of the plexiglass. Don't put it next to it. Don't line it up beside of it. Put it right on top of the plexiglass. There's more than enough room to do that. You won't close it down on anything, so don't worry about that. Um, so anyways, this is what we're going to do. Um, first, have it like this, okay? This is where the DVD drive is, and right about here is where the back of the drive is, and that's where this plugs in at. So you want to keep that in mind as you go. Now when you flip it, just remember it's here. So when you flip it, that, that's right here. Okay, that way you don't actually line them up to where this ends up over here on this side and it won't reach. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to wire these up. Um, let's get these untangled. Mine are kind of tangled, so let me, let me straighten that out real quick. Now typically the ones from Tick Mods, they will have uh, one, at least two that has a little bit of a shorter wire. It usually isn't but more than an inch or two, but those you want to keep closer. So this goes, is going to be plugged in right about here in the console. So the ones with the shorter wires should always go about here and here. So all you got to do is you just peel off the second piece, the uh, second side of the foam sticky tape, and you line it up right around here. So I'm just going to put it about right here. Make sure that the LED isn't popping out too. That would look kind of weird if the LED just pops out and you can actually see the LED. It would also make it look a lot brighter and kind of make it look like it's it's glowing a lot more than it actually is. And then next I'm going to do this one. Let's see. Actually, this one has some glue left over from another project, so we're just going to kind of pretend like that's not there. Um, just going to put it like this. And you see I'm angling them in this way from each corner. Now, like I said, this one sticks out, but there was some glue I forgot to take off for the video. This is kind of my fixer-upper one, my test subject. The poor fella goes through a lot. Kind of reminds me of that test dummy on Mythbusters, actually. Gets put through a whole lot of crap that it shouldn't have to deal with. So these ones are the ones that are a little bit longer. So I'm just, I'm just doing the same thing here. I'm just taking it and lining it up. And it doesn't have to necessarily point in. Even if it's in this general corner, it's still going to push light out in that, in that general direction. So if you, for instance, if you wanted to put it kind of like this instead of exactly like this, then you could, and it wouldn't really affect it all that much as far as how it's lit up. And you do want to put some pressure on it just to make sure that the other side sticks down pretty well. Alright, now do this last one. Mush that down real well. Okay, now all we're going to do is we're going to just install this into the console. So let me get the, uh, the actual console guts. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take your drive, we're going to take out your old SATA cable, then we're going to take this. Now you can see it is kind of positioned in a certain way where it kind of fits in there perfectly. So just try to pay attention to that, it'll make it easier and it means you won't accidentally put it in backwards. So now I'm just plugging it back in. Just making sure I get it back in there the correct way and I don't get it backwards because that will cause you problems and it can even short something out if you do that incorrectly. Now we're going to insert that back in. Now, there are some extra wires here, but you do have some options. You can either use some glue and do it to where you line them around, or it's not too hard to just uh, kind of run them along the edges where it's not really going to be seen. And... Uh, so yeah, so that's all I'm going to do here, is I'm taking the wire, I'm just kind of hiding it, you know, just kind of getting it out of the way. You're not going to hide all of it, and actually having a little bit of extra wire in there kind of, I think kind of makes it look interesting, just because it makes it obvious that you've got some other things going on in there. But it's kind of up to your preference. I mean, if you want to, if you want to hide everything as much as possible, then, you know, you may want to get out some hot glue or some other type of sticky tape. But see, I don't think that looks too bad. I mean, you've got the wires, you can't hardly see them. You can see just a few extra ones right here, and you, I could probably do a little more just to kind of move them around and get them out of the way. But overall, that's not too bad, and you can't really see anything extra. Um, so then after that, all you're doing is just putting your case back together. Uh, 
you know, putting the sides and the, and the faceplate on and everything. And that's pretty much it. Um, so anyways, I hope this tutorial helped. I hope you guys check out Tinker Mods. And I hope you see why these are the LED kits that, this is the type of LED kit that you need to get if you want to do a good case mod. Um, if you're worried about it looking good and you're kind of a perfectionist, I mean, if you don't care, you just want to slap some lights in it, then go right ahead. But you're paying about the same price for this as you would the other kits, and you're paying, you're paying for better quality because they're all done by hand, so everything is made sure it's heated and the joints are done correctly with all the solder joints. So you don't have to worry about them falling apart like you do the other ones, which does definitely happen. When I used to buy those myself, it happened quite a bit. So, anyways, make sure you like and subscribe the video. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel, I mean. Um, I've got a lot of case modding tutorials, a lot of modding showcases, a lot of repair tutorials too, and I'm adding stuff up pretty regularly, maybe uh, three or four videos a month at least. So it's definitely worth a subscription. It's a lot of cool stuff. So anyways, guys, until next time.